All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about linear functions and slope. We mentioned linear functions just a little bit in the previous lesson. We're going to do a little bit more with that today. And so in this lesson, you're going to learn the basic structure and components of a linear function. We're going to learn the definition for the slope of a line. The characteristics of horizontal and vertical lines. How to find the slope of horizontal and vertical lines. How to determine the slope and y-intercept of a linear function. And how to graph a linear function given the slope and y-intercept. So a linear function is so-called because it represents a straight line. Linear function is represented by the equation either y equals mx plus b or the function f of x equals mx plus b. And both of those equations are essentially the same. In this, both those equations, m is the slope of the function and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Okay, remember that the y-intercept is written as an ordered pair, 0 and b. It's the point where the line will cross the y-axis. If you solve the equation in terms of y, in other words, if you have y by itself on one side of the equation, then the slope, m, is always just the coefficient of x. So let's talk about the slope for a minute. The slope of a linear function, m, is the rate of change of y in terms of x. Usually described as rise over run. How does y change as x change? That's what we're interested in. If the equation for a linear function is given, then the slope can be determined by solving for y and finding the coefficient of x. And so if you're given the equation, just solve for y, and the coefficient of x is the slope. If a graph or points are given, then the slope can be calculated using the slope formula. And that is given two points, x1, y1, and x2, and y2. The slope is given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All those additional pieces in there are just different ways of writing the slope formula. The one you're going to primarily use will be the last one. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So just as a caveat here, in mathematics, uh, a change in a variable is represented by a Greek delta. So delta y is, is equal to y2 minus y1, hence the delta y over delta x part. In future mathematics courses, you will likely see that Greek delta again. So we will not really use it in this class. So first we want to find the slope and the y-intercept of this line, and then we're going to use the slope and the y-intercept to graph it. And so first we need the slope and the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept... Our equation is y equals 3x minus 4. The y-intercept comes from b, which is negative 4. And the y-intercept comes from b, which is negative 4. And so our y-intercept, the point, is going to be 0 and negative 4, 0 and b. Now the slope, this equation is already solved for y. And so the slope is just the coefficient of x. So m is just 3. Now, as a way to help with graphing this, I'm going to write this as 3 over 1. So now we need to graph this line. Starting with the y-intercept, that's going to be our first point. Remember that it takes two points to graph a line. And so we're going to start with our first point at 0 and negative 4. And then we're going to use the slope to find the next point. Remember, the slope represents rise over run. So that means starting from our y-intercept, we're going to go up three points and then to the right one. Rise means to go up, and run means to go to the right. And so, we start from the y-intercept, we go up 3 and to the right 1, and our second point is down there. Using the slope, we could find more points on the graph by just repeating the process. Go up 3 and over 1, and then up 3 and over 1. 
But we really only need two points to graph this line. And then we just draw a line in between. There's our line. Y equals 3x minus 4. So let's do this again. Except this time now the equation is not solved for y. We need to solve for y first. Then we have to determine the y-intercept and the slope. And then we're going to graph the line. So we have 3x minus 5y equals 10. We're going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides. 3x minus 3x goes to 0. We get minus 5y is equal to negative 3x plus 10. Divide everything by negative 5. And we get y equals 3 fifths x minus 2. So our y-intercept comes from b, which is negative 2. And so our y-intercept is just the point 0 and negative 2. The slope is the coefficient of x, which is 3 fifths. So what that means when we're dealing with the slope is that we're going to go up 3 and to the right 5. If you ever have a negative slope, go down however many values it is and then to the right. So let's start with our first point, 0 and negative 2. And we're going to use the slope to locate the next point. We're going to go up 3 and then to the right 5. And there's our second point. And now all we need to do is draw a line between. So horizontal and vertical lines are basically special cases of linear functions. Horizontal lines, they run left to right like the horizon. And horizontal lines are defined by their y-intercept. Horizontal lines always have a slope of zero because there's no rise. The line doesn't move up or down does not have an x-intercept. The horizontal line will never cross the x-axis. When we write the equation for a horizontal line, we either write y equals b or f of x equals b, where b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Vertical lines, which go up or down, they're defined by their x-intercept. Vertical lines always have an undefined slope. In other words, there's no run. The reason it's undefined is because you're dividing by zero. In this case, the denominator of the slope formula is zero. Remember that divided by zero is bad. Vertical lines do not have a y-intercept. They'll never cross the y-axis. And they're written as an equation x equals a, where a is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept. And so let's get a little bit of practice with this. We're going to find the slopes of these lines, and then we're going to graph them so that you can see what they look like. So our first line is y equals 4. y equals implies that it's a horizontal line, and it's a horizontal line through the point y equals 4. So if we wanted to draw this line, here's the point y equals 4, and there's our horizontal line. So the line doesn't move up, it only goes left and right. And so the slope, m, is just 0. Our next one is x equals negative 2. If we wanted to graph this line, we would just find the point where x equals negative 2. And we're going to draw a vertical line through that point. Remember that y equals is a horizontal line, x equals is a vertical line. So this is the line x equals negative 2. Because it's a vertical line, the slope is undefined. Vertical lines do not have a slope. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. So given points, we can calculate the slope using the slope formula. Here's the condensed version from earlier, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
So if you're given the graph, you can pick two points off the graph and use that to calculate the slope. Or if you're just given two points, then you can just use the formula to calculate the slope. And so in both cases, we're going to use that slope formula. So let's start off with this graph here. And we want to find the slope. Well, we're given two points on the graph. And those two points are 0 and 4 and negative 2 and 1. So we're just going to label these x1, y1, x2, and y2. And to find the slope, we're going to say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 1 minus y1 is 4. x2 is negative 2 minus x1 is 0. And so we get negative 3 over negative 2, or positive 3 halves. That's our slope. That means it should go up 3 blocks and over 2. If we start from our first point, or our leftmost point, and we go up 3 and over 2, we then get to the next point. And so we can see that we found the slope correctly. So given just two points, we want to find the slope of the line that passes through these two points. We don't necessarily need a graph. We can just use the points and the slope formula. So negative 1 and 3, 5 and 12. We're going to say this is x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And using the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 12 minus y1 is 3. x2 is 5 minus x1 is negative 1. When dealing with these formulas, these parentheses that I'm using are unnecessary, but it's there for you to see how I'm plugging in each one of the points. You could just as easily have written this 12 minus 3 over 5 minus negative 1. I just think that the first way is easier to see and understand. So 12 minus 3, that's 9. 5 minus negative 1, that's 5 plus 1, which is 6. We can then reduce this fraction, divide them both by 3. And again, we get 3 halves. So it was just a coincidence that this slope was the same as the previous problem. But you can calculate the slope of a line just given two points. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the slope and y-intercept of a line. You should be able to find the slope of horizontal and vertical lines. And you should be able to graph horizontal and vertical lines. You should be able to graph a linear equation. And you should be able to find the slope of a line given two points.